Good morning, my dear friends. Welcome you all to HVAC Part 6 Cooling Load Calculation video. So, so far we discuss uh, internal sensible load and room external sensible load. So, now we need to see external to internal sensible load. So, we will start this one with one example here. Now, assume we have two conditions here the, for the ventilation. Yeah, the first one is sand drop lower for the fresh air intake. So, from the sand drop lower, the fresh air is directly coming to the FCU uh, return air plenum box. Okay, here. And here from the supply connection, it is distributed to the room through the diffuser, square diffuser. This is the first case. And second case for the high rise building or medium rise building, we have the FHU fresh air handling unit. The fresh air handling unit is supplying the treatery fresh air to the FCU. Okay. So, so in this case what happened uh, in the first case we are we are getting the outside air so the temperature of outside you know that 46 degrees celsius in the dubai so it will be very high indoor we have to maintain 24 degrees celsius so this time the coil load will be very high and what happened to this case we are getting the treated air okay so treated air means there is no issue for the coil in the fcu so these two uh, difference we have normally so for the low rise building like uh, small small buildings we are following this case one and for the uh, big high like uh, big rise building uh, high rise building sorry high rise building medium rise building so these are the big building we are following the uh, proper treated fresh unilink supply okay so generally saying we need to give the fresh air to the room whether it is treated or not uh, untreated that's not an issue but we need to give the fresh air okay that's the first condition and the introduction of uh, outdoor air for ventilation of uh, conditioned space is necessary to dilute the odors given by given off by people smoking and other internal air contaminants okay that is the reason we are giving the fresh air and the second thing is the amount of ventilation required varies primarily with the total number of people and the area and minimum fresh air we need to give uh, 5 cm okay so that's the important thing and uh, as i mentioned here you have seen in lots of uh, videos that when come to fresh air fresh air means we'll take one table and you can see this uh, this table in uh, all the cases we'll just to find out the fresh air for the uh, persons and the area so as far as i am concerned so fresh air is not only this one this is okay for the small room but when it comes to practical as a design engineer uh, there are plenty of things you have to consider here for example uh, we have to maintain the positive pressure in the building so where to add the excessive pressure uh, fresh air okay because uh, we will prepare a detailed table for example if you consider one uh, big commercial building there will be around uh, uh, 50 to 80 rooms will be there for example so so each rooms we will make the calculation like what is the positive pressure we need what is the negative pressure we need finally we, we need to see summary uh, which pressure is very high whether it is positive or negative so we need to see where to add the excess pressure where we should not add the excess pressure then uh, how much flow difference between pressure and the excess is, uh, we need to consider it's not like uh, simply we consider 10 percentage uh, uh, pressure for total air no that's not a correct one so we need to see the total uh, supply air flow then if it if the building has smokers then uh, how to consider the flow rate and what about the zone AI yeah, distribution effectiveness and how to design for the preheat coil, cooling coil, reheat coil and there are plenty of things are there in the fresh air calculation for the project. So it's not simply about multiplying the area with the total uh, requirement area and number of people in the airflow. So we will surely, uh, I will surely post this clear video about FHU design, installation uh, and testing. Okay, so I will surely post the video in the future. So if you see this uh, ASHRAE 62.1 table 6-1 uh, 2022 edition. So you, you can see there are total 90 uh, occupancy category list is there. Okay, classified in this uh, table 6-1 that is table 6-1 for minimum ventilation rate. Uh, so if you go to table 6-2 the next table in ASHRAE 62.1 that is for the exhaust air and table 6-1 for the fresh air. So that is a different first of all you need to know. And the second thing is uh, how these values are uh, decided. For example, as I told you, uh, the minimum uh, CFM per person, it should be 5 CFM. Okay, as I, as I mentioned here, the minimum CFM per one person, it is 5 CFM. So, it will vary from 5, 7.5, 10, uh, 20 based on the application, but minimum should be 5 CFM per person. After that, here if you see the area outdoor air rate, okay, that means for 1 meter square or 1 feet, uh, feet square, what is the CFM we need to provide? Okay, so these two, uh, two things are there in this chart. So mainly this uh, table above, uh, just now we saw that one, this is based on the human uh, bioeffluence. That means the bioeffluence means a variety of pollutants produced during the metabolic process in the human body, okay, by nature. So we need to control the, uh, uh, we need to control the CO2 to particular limit. As I mentioned here, this ventilation requirements are based on the analysis of 
dilution of CO2 as the representative human bio effluent. Okay, so as per ASHA uh, standard 62, comfort criteria with respect to human bio effluent is likely to be satisfied if the indoor carbon dioxide concentration is remains within 700 ppm. Okay, so based on this consideration for the different application, ASHA has this uh, table for the fresh air. So, for your information, I will add one more point here. That's an interesting one. So, you can ask me, there are 90 uh, occupancy categories are there in this list. And so what if I have some category which is not there in this list? So, what I will do in that situation? So, the answer is very simple. What you have to do is, you have to very verify your occupant density. You have to see the occupant activities. And also, you have to see the building construction of your uh, project building. And you have to match that building with the relevant uh, listed building. Okay. So, the ASHRAE also allows that also. So, you have to match your uh, proposed building which is not in the list with the uh, available list okay so you have to do like that so if you see here uh, this is the hotel and for the bedroom or living room we need to consider 5 cfm for one person and 0 0.06 cfm for one meter square okay so apply, I applied the application numbers here. So number of person 4 into 5 CFM per person it is 20 CFM and second one the area of the room is 20 into 13 260 square feet and 0 0.06 CFM per square feet. So total will be 15.6. So now you need to add this two value 20 plus 15.6 it is 35.6 CFM. Okay. So now what we need to do here is. So we have the formula uh, external to internal sensible load that means outside air load is equal to 1.08 into CFM into bypass factor. Okay, so bypass factor we will see what is that uh, into delta T. So if you see this, uh, if you see in the half software, uh, by default the coil bypass factor will be 0 0.1 or 10 percentage. Okay, when you do the uh, half calculation, I will explain this one also. So normally uh, now you can see what is bypass factor first. For example, if you pass 100 CFM uh, air flow into the cooling coil, not all the 100 CFM uh, supply air will get uh, cooled. Okay, so there will be some uh, some amount of air will be escaped. So that escape air is called as a bypass. That is it means that is getting by bypassed that is getting bypassed okay so here the coil uh, cooling coil bypass factor is a concept developed develop to indicate the eff efficiency or effectiveness of a cooling coil okay to cool the air to the saturation condition okay so in other words for a perfect coil means bypass factor should be zero but it's not uh, practically it's not possible and the reason here is uh, because all the air passing through the cooling coil would become uh, would come into con direct contact with the coil surfaces and be fully dehumidified to the saturation condition okay this is completely not possible in the real world because uh, the problem here is if i make one coil um, uh, considering all the practical uh, uh, things like uh, i'll increase the number of rows in the coil and uh, so i can increase is the contact phase, contact surface so what happened finally we will end up with the pressure drop okay so we have the limitation the pressure drop should not exceed some value uh, so that's why that's the reason we cannot arch, we cannot add too many rows too many fins so that will lead to the higher pressure drop okay so we will see a uh, few main factors which affects the bypass factor first of all the number of rows in a coil number of fins per inch I mean spin spacing then velocity of air through the coil so normally in the drawing if you, you can see that one they will mention like normally like the phase velocity in the coil should not exceed 2.5 meter per second so these are the, uh, there are some reason like this so finally the refrigerant temperature inside the coil tip okay so now if you see here coil designer optimize the coil surface area at the lowest air side pressure drop in order to meet the required sensible and latent cooling load okay given a particular space constraint inside the HVAC unit cabinet so that's why we cannot add too much uh, rows uh, and uh, to increase the bypass factor because it will lead to the air flow pressure drop so normally uh, what we are doing in the project actually uh, here is if you don't uh, yet uh, have an actual preliminary unit selection that means at the starting stage of the project then it is acceptable to temporarily assume the default 0 0.1 that means 10 percentage as a bypass, uh, bypass factor value however after selecting the specific coil you should go back to the cooling coil setting in half and adjust the bypass factor to match your actual se uh, unit selection okay so here in the uh, below you can see what are the reason we have uh, to increase and uh, decrease the bypass factor and coming to the next table the, the reference for this table is this career handbook okay so here 
so in this table normally the bypass factor uh, they have given for the different application for example hospital uh, operating room these are the thing the bypass factor should be very low 0 to 0 0.1 if you go to small retail shops the bypass factor can be 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 okay so the different uh, applications are given here so normally what we are considering uh, we will consider 0 0.1 in the initial tender stage uh, for the as a uh, default uh, by factor in the bypass factor in the HAP calculation so later stage we can modify based on the selection okay so finally the answer is external to internal sensible load out that means outer air load uh, 1.08 into cfm cfm just now we received from the number of person using the ashtray reference table that was 35.6 cfm then bypass factor so for the initial stage we can consider a 10 percentage as 0 0.1 delta t is equal to outside temperature minus indoor temperature that is 115 minus 75 it is 40 so the total load is uh, external to internal load is 153.792 btu per hour so now we can find the answer for total room sensible load that is room internal sensible load room external sensible load and external to internal sensible load so first room internal sensible load as you know that people lighting that power or motor load then equipment means the appliance load then floor and partition all these things will come coming to the external uh, sensible load uh, we saw that it's like a floor uh, then wall so this are thing we consider glasses so this are thing we consider the external sensible load then external to sensible load it's a ventilation air mean the makeup air okay so as i mentioned if you are providing treated fresh air there is no need to consider the external to internal sensible load okay so in our project there are uh, epcus are there so it's a small project so what we consider here pressure is provided from uh, untreated uh, like untreated air okay but actually saying when we do, when we when i do that project uh, it was a five floor no g plus five so we have a separate uh, uh, fresh air handling unit so from there with the aid of the fresh handling unit i provide the fresh air okay that time i didn't consider that one but for the example i want you to uh, see all the practical thing in the package so that's why I, without neglecting that one i just added that one okay so the next question here is why the safety factor of 10 percentage uh, for sensible and 5 per uh, percentage latent is always considered as a default so if you go to this uh, hap software there will be a bypass value like uh, as i mentioned here uh, for the sensibility is 5 percentage latinity 5 percentage and this will if you see the output also this 5 and 10 percent will be there over all the values here so we need to know how wh what is the reason behind this one to consider the safety factor first so i'll continue in the next video uh, with the answer of this question so we have completely done sensible load now we have balances latent load how to find out the off-call temperature air flow rate and total ton of refrigeration so that will finish in the next video